have a few announcements today. Um, first of all, Phyllis uh, has broken her hip again, or not again, but has broken her hip, and um, she's getting pins put in and having surgery, we think today, right? We think today. We think today. So please just keep her in, in your prayers. You know, she was recovering from her broken leg, and to have this on top is, is hard. Um, also, Roger gave me a long list of jobs for Solid Rock that he's still asking for people to volunteer for. Um, so if you would like to serve and have, he says it just is a 20 minute time commitment. You really don't even have to stay the whole time at Solid Rock. You can come and be the person who makes the popcorn. Or you could come and be the person who leads a 30 minute huddle group. Um, with, which is just sort of delving into the scriptures with the, with the kids that are attending. Or you could be the person that does games. Um, so if you're interested in helping with that, our first solid walk will be this, um, this weekend. Is it Friday or Saturday, Ashley? It's Saturday. Um, and this is going to be a long-term commitment. Roger wants to do this once a month, so if you're interested in helping in the fall, if you can't do this weekend, then please um, call Roger and say that you would, yes, you would volunteer to help with the youth um, for Solid Rock Cafe. Um, the other thing that I'd like to announce is that last Saturday for our registration for the food pantry, um, we are now at 59, so we have to have 125 to get our food pantry started with the Bay Area Food Bank. If you know of anyone who could benefit from that, have them contact me or to come the day of our next registration, which you may have seen on the sign outside, July 14th, we're gonna have another one to try to get our 125 families that we can serve with the food pantry. Um, in the meantime, in the old kitchen, we've always collected cans and other dry foods for folks who just come that are in need. So please, our supplies and our stock is getting um, low and if you would bring your canned foods or other dry food items that we can stock the old kitchen um, and not that we're going to do away with that when our pantry comes this is in addition to so we don't want to turn anybody away if they don't come on a food pantry day they you know we want to have that stocked up in the back so please um, bring your food pantry items because that falls in line with our initiative to abolish poverty and end suffering Sir, are there any other announcements? I think Michelle had an announcement. First of all, I'd like to say that Ricky is out of the hospital and he has no external devices attached to him now. So he's real happy with that. <laughs> when y'all were coming in, I don't know if you saw the Boy Scouts are going out on a camping trip. He's going with them. So hopefully. He'll be doing fine. Um, the infection's all gone, so he's doing well. He's also going to be going to Camp Scamp to work as a counselor. And part of their thing is to sell raffle tickets. And with him not being here today, um, he asked me to sell raffle tickets. They're one for $2 or three for five. And the raffle is for a $250 Walmart gift card. So if you'd like to help Ricky out, just see me after church.
welcome. Some 236 years ago, on July 4th, 1776, this great nation, the United States of America, in a struggle for what was right and free, was proudly born. May we celebrate that precious freedom for which our forefathers fought so bravely. The freedom that is inherent in the stars and stripes of our revered flag. Now may we stand and repeat the Pledge of Allegiance led by our former scout, Al Starr. pray. Our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we come praising your name and thanking you for the blessings of our lives. Father, you are the great I am, providing our needs even before we ask. Thank you for your tender love and mercy. Father, we thank you for those who have come expectantly to receive your blessings this morning. 
May your Holy Spirit grace all of us as we prepare to receive your Holy Communion. Bless John this morning as he brings the message you have placed upon his heart. Give him clearness of word and thought. Embrace him with your Holy Spirit. In this special service, Lord, we give thanks for our forefathers who gave their all that we might experience freedom from tyranny. It is because of their willingness to give, of their resources, and even their lives, that we can come here today and worship. Thank you, God, for, you, for their devotion to you and your word. We pray all of these things in the name of your precious Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Independence Day, or the 4th of July, is a grand holiday in the United States. This holiday is a fa favorite of young people who especially enjoy the colorful and noisy fireworks. Many wear their red, white, and blue, wave flags, and sing patriotic songs as they plan their barbecues and family gatherings. These are but a symbol of the meaning behind the 4th of July celebration. This day of celebration came about as a result of the valiant efforts and strong commitment of our American forefathers. Amazing changes and events have occurred since that day in 1776. However, very important changes and dramatic events also occurred prior to July 4th, 1776. Brave and restless people uprooted from their lives, left everything behind, crossed the Atlantic to come to a new land where they sought freedoms and rights not available in their homelands. They formed settlements here and organized into towns and colonies with their own laws and rules and the ideals were being formed for a new free land. The vote to become an independent country actually occurred on July 2nd, 1776 by the Continental Congress in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Congress formally approved the document on July 4th, 1776, and it was to be called the Declaration of Independence. This declaration was the final break with England and a expressed the united view of all the colonies to become independent. The colonies were not deterred as they sought to identify and solidify the profound and precious freedoms they had so yearned for, that they were willing to commit their lives to the values that they embraced. Our forefathers worked through strife and fears of their time to prevail in establishing this great land. We are the recipients and the inheritors of the, their tireless efforts. So this 4th of July, let's hold our hands high as we express our thanks that we are privileged to live in such a wonderful land. May each of us strive to live by the integrity and values that that document was founded upon. There is a legend about the day our nation, of our nation's birth. In a little hall in Philadelphia, a day on which debate raged for hours, the men gathered there were honorable men, hard pressed by a king who had flaunted their very laws they were willing to obey. Even so, to sign the Declaration of Independence was such an act that the walls resounded with words treason and gallows, headman's acts, and the issue remained in doubt. The legend says that at that point, a man rose and spoke. He is described as not a young man, 
but one who had summoned all of his energy for an impassionate plea. He cited the grievances that had brought them to this moment, and finally his failing voice said, they may turn every tree into a gallow, every hole into a grave, and yet the words of this parchment can never die. To the blacksmith in his workshop, they will speak hope. To the slave in the mines, freedom. Sign this parchment. Sign it if the very next moment the noose is placed around your neck, for that parchment will be the textbook of freedom, the Bible of the rights of man forever. He fell back exhausted. The 56 delegates swept up by his eloquence rushed forward and signed that document destined to be as immortal a work of man as can be. When they turned to thank him for his timely oratory, he was not to be found. Nor could any be found who knew who he was or how he had come in or gone out through the locked and guarded doors. Well, that is the legend. But we do know for certain that 56 men, a little band so unique we have never seen their like since, had pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. What manner of men were they? 24 were lawyers and jurists, 11 were merchants and tradesmen, and nine were farmers. They were soft-spoken men of means and education, they were not an unwashed rebel. They had achieved security, but valued freedom more. Their stories have not been told nearly enough. John Hart was driven from his ill wife's bedside. His wife died. His property was destroyed. He died of exhaustion and a broken heart. Carter Braxton lost all of his ships, sold his home to pay his debts, and died in rags. Nelson personally urged General Washington to fire on his home and destroy it after the British general took it for his, head, for his headquarters. Let us this 4th of July remember that here in this land, for the first time, it was decided that men were born with certain God-given rights, that government is only a convenience created and managed by the people with no powers of its own except those voluntarily granted by its people. We are not a perfect nation, but compared to the world, we are a blessed land with freedoms that many, many only dream of enjoying. May freedom always reign in this land is my prayer. Happy 4th of July. The poem that I am going to read is entitled Freedom in America. Freedom is a breath of air, pine scented or salty like the sea. Freedom is a field new plowed burrows of democracy. Freedom is a forest, trees tall and straight as men. Freedom is a printing press, the power of the pen. Freedom is a country church, a cathedral stately spire. Freedom is a spirit that can set the soul on fire. Freedom is a man's birthright, a sacred living rampart, a pulse beat of humanity, the throb of a nation's heart. Abundant joy leads to overflowing generosity. I'd like to read to you from 2 Corinthians. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, 
about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of their affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means, and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this, not merely as we expected, they gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will of God to us so that we might complete this generous undertaking among you. These uh, folks in Macedonia, we can hold them up as an example of abundant giving by a group of people. Now, this is a bunch of folks that's living out there on the edge. They don't have much they, uh, in, in terms of material wealth. And usually we think about uh, material wealth with, uh, associated with our abundant giving. However, they, they gave anyway, and they did it gladly, and they did it generously. They gave not only their money, but most importantly, they gave themselves. Primarily, they gave themselves to the Lord. And once they did that, once they gave themselves to the Lord, the rest was easy. Well, maybe easier. Well, maybe the word's possible. Possible. Uh, and it can be for us too. I know uh, in times past, we've heard a lot about percentages, give percentages. And we've heard sermons and talks on giving and stewardship, and they always included something about percentages. But let's look at a scripture from Luke. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. I didn't hear anything about percentages. God deserves so much more than we give, but we all know that life happens. Things get in the way. We live in a world with complex demands on our time, on our energy, on our focus, on our attention. And giving is so much more than just money. It includes giving God a specific and intentional portion of your day, your week, and your whole life. So may we now pledge our lives and our fortunes and our sacred honor. And hopefully that will lead us to that abundant joy and we can experience that overflowing generosity. Almighty God, we give thanks for the privilege of being able to return a portion of those blessings that you have uh, uh, so richly blessed us with. We would pray that uh, your spirit would bless them as they go about the work of your uh, kingdom, that uh, they might be used in accordance with your will. And we pray this in the name of Christ.
want to share some verses from the fifth and sixth chapter of Galatians. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened against by the yoke of slavery. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Carry each other's burden. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Can anybody tell me who William Wallace was? Thank you, Financial. He, one of your, uh, <laughs> as Stancil quoted, the movie Braveheart, but he was a real person. He lived back in the 13th century. He was a Scotsman. And uh, he was a firm believer in freedom. And in the movie, and also quotations if you get on different blog sites just prior to the first big battle they were going to have with the English and they were far outnumbered the Scotsmen he rode a horse in front of the gathered Scotsmen and he said I'm William Wallace one of the men said you can't be because he, in real life he was short in stature. The William Wallace we heard about has to be seven foot tall. He says, I am William Wallace, a fellow countryman, and I see countrymen that I'm proud to be with. And one of the men said, why should I fight today? I could just go home and live. And this was his response. A, fight and you may die. Run and you'll live at least a while. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell your enemies they may take my life, but they'll never take our freedom. What is freedom? Can we be truly free? As Alice shared, our founding fathers believed that freedom was valuable. 
enough to risk everything. They risked their fortune, as she shared with you. They risked their reputation. They risked their honor. They risked their very lives. And many of them paid for this freedom, not only with their blood, but with the blood of their children. Today, we live in the security and comfort of said freedom because of hundreds of thousands of our fellow countrymen and women over the years not only gave service for their country, but also shed their blood on foreign soils. They died in isolated places with names not remembered so that we can enjoy the experience of freedom, the responsibility of that freedom. In fact, in the news media, has reported over the last couple weeks that there has been several more that have died so that you and me you and I Louise would correct me if I said you and me you and I can share in the taste of the fruit of freedom that springs from the tree of liberty that was planted some 200 years ago. Freedom is an important concept in the United States. We all speak of our freedoms and cherish them, recognizing that in many countries such freedoms do not exist. We have the ability to choose for ourselves what kind of lives we shall live and what kind of people we will be. As Americans, the document of freedom for us is found, as Alice shared in the Bill of Rights. It outlines what freedom we have. They cannot be repealed. Let us look at one of those freedoms that is granted to us as citizens of America and compare them with the scriptures I have shared with you today. The First Amendment guarantees Americans the freedom of religion. It reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an established religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Freedom is a word that also strikes at us for a different reason. As Christians, freedom is also something that is central to our faith. This week we celebrate the freedoms of our nation. More than that, today we will celebrate the sacrifice of Jesus that gives us the freedom we so deeply love. It's a greater freedom than those of the politicians. It's a freedom we can have if we place our faith in our lives in Jesus Christ. Doing this frees us from the slavery of sin. We are not free on our own, but we are free only by our willingness to give all we are to Jesus Christ. Because of that, we become a free people. Not under any sort of law that we must keep in order to earn the salvation. For it is by God's grace, through Jesus, that we are free from the burden of sin. Being free from our sin does not mean we are free to exercise religion any way we see fit. Let us look at Paul's letter to the Galatians. In verse 2 of chapter 6, he says, Carry each other's burdens, 
And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Put simply, Paul says that we are not free to practice our religion however we want. He says there is a very specific way to practice our faith. To bear one another's burdens. Paul says that this fulfills the highest law in the land. A law that is higher than even the Constitution of the United States. You see, it's the law of Christ. And what is this law? In a word, love. We can find no deeper, no higher, no wider practice of love than when we bear the burdens of one another. The law of Christ frees us from selfishness in order that we may experience the joy that can be only found in the deep, meaningful relationships. Relationships that are not afraid to share the burden of each other. Just as Christ carried the burden of our sins, we must carry each other's burdens. Was I free to do whatever I wanted to do with my life and with my time these past few weeks? Absolutely not. I was bound by this Christ, this law of Christ, to bear the emotional burdens of those who died, those who were illness in our, in our congregation. As many of you did. But you know, you and I would not have it any other way. Were we free to do whatever we wanted? No. But we were free to love this, our church family, in their time of grief and pain. It is because of the bond of Christ that we are free to go and share those moments to comfort them. And each of us has done the same in the past. And yes, even we'll do it in the future. Just look at our congregation prayer list or even your personal prayer list. There's a song, God Forgave My Sins. And there's a verse in it. Freely, freely you have received. Freely, freely give. It caught my eye yesterday. In yesterday's paper, Rabbi Stevens Silberman wrote an article. And he was talking about people in his congregation a young man that died 17 years old a man that he cared a lot for and he goes on to say that he read the book of Job many times but it hit him in a different way and from the book of Job he quotes and the book of Job was written some 3,000 years ago. All his brothers and sisters and acquaintances came to him, ate food with him in his house. They consoled and comforted him. They didn't have any magic words. It says on the heading of the column, what do I say? I didn't have any words comfort those in the loss of a loved one. But I was there. As you were there. Just being present in someone's life helps them carry that burden. The freedom of Christ is like that. 
It allows us in our daily lives, as the song says, to receive at times. But it also allows us to give in order that we may experience the true freedom. At times, our time is not our own in order that we may be free to fulfill the law of Jesus Christ, which is love. We have been given other freedoms, such as not to worry about the cares of this world or the freedom to call upon God in prayer. We ought to be thankful to God that we are given such freedoms when we wear the name of the Christ. All the troubles that plague the lives of a person have an answer in Jesus that we remember this day. What a blessing we have at this table of remembrance. As we partake of this bread and wine, let us remember the freedom that Jesus has given to us as we live our lives in service to others. When we read the Word of God, we see very quickly that Christians most surely has freedom. First and foremost, Christians receive the freedom from sin and death. As seen in Romans 6.22, But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto sanctification and the end of eternal life. In Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of the life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. We have been afforded many great rights as citizens of this country, the United States of America. But there are times when we l must lay down our rights and lay down our freedoms in order that we may be truly free. We are called, we are called to be a servant of the Lord. And when we are, we will truly be free as a child of God. We have seen in the scriptures that there are many freedoms that come, but they come with an obligation of serving God and carrying each other's burdens. May you know the Spirit that sets you free to do His will. May you feel the freedom to say, I am a follower of Jesus. I am free. bear my soul. I have felt the weight of sin in my life. Where I just wanted to lay down and not move. But the Spirit didn't let me. It prodded me. It caused me realize that the forgiveness that I thought wasn't there 
was beyond my personal being. It was beyond my personal being. And I was made aware that if I would bear the burdens of others, I would be relieved of that burden of sin. And I'm sure each of you have had those moments. We'll never know what words, what presence will bring release to somebody. I see some of you shaking your heads. God is good. God is good. As the blessing is said over the bread, please kneel as much as possible.
as the blessing is said on the line, let us kneel as much as possible.
O eternal God, may our minds and hearts be stirred with a deepening sense of patriotism and gratitude as we go forth from this service today. May we continue to think of that day of high and holy memory in our national history when a company of God-fearing men were guided by thy divine wisdom to sign the Declaration of Independence. Grant that the blessings of freedom, which were purchased at tremendous cost and which we prize so highly and are privileged to enjoy in such an abundant measure, always be worth saving. May we take seriously our personal responsibilities to keep this nation free. Help us each do our part in many ways to keep our faith strong, keep our country free, keep our personal freedoms, and to glorify you, our Lord, who gave us this great nation and led our founding fathers in their words and deeds that granted us the freedoms we enjoy today. We thank you that our country has been blessed above all nations. You promised us if we kept your commandments, we would always be blessed. Help us to grow our faith in you and let our ways be your ways so that we may forever be blessed as a nation and as a people. Hear this in our name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.